So recently when I was setting up my new VFD for uh, Modbus on Mach 3, I ran into just so many problems with bad software and just outright incorrect documentation. So I wanted to run through all of the gotchas that I ran into. If you're looking for just how to make it work, uh, check out this video where I don't do any explanation and just walk through all of the settings and build the uh, the brain and do the Modbus setup. So what I wanted to do here is just go over all of the things that I found to make the Modbus with Hitachi VFD uh, actually communicate properly. Best practice is to use a isolated uh, RS-485 adapter, but I got just a cheap Gearmo 485 adapter, USB adapter on, on Amazon. Uh, check below for a link to that. Uh, and I found that it works in with my setup, it works just fine. Since the Hitachi VFD only supports half duplex operation anyway, you only need T plus and minus uh, terminals on the adapter, uh, so the rest of it you don't need to hook up. Um, so you could potentially uh, get by with just one of the even cheaper um, uh, two pin. 45 adapters, um, but this just happens to be the one that, that I grabbed and it works okay in, in my application. And so I'm using the Modbus serial plugin um, and it was a little confusing how it all went together. I, I found it first, but um, it's really quite simply split kind of into to two sections. You use the brain to do uh, all of the calculation and the, the setting and getting, and then in this plug-in thing here, each of these are the individual um, mod Modbus registers. So the only thing that talks to and from the registers um, are these individual configuration numbers. And once you've set a configuration number up to talk to a register, then you can access that from your brain and talk to that configuration number, and you can get and set those values from there. The port address doesn't seem to do anything, um, at least in, in this configuration. Um, so I found that you don't really have to worry about what that is. The first major gotcha that I ran into is in the Hitachi uh, documentation, the register numbers that they have for this WJ200, they're not right. So here you see uh, register one and register two are supposed to be the high and low bit of the frequency source and register three is the first inverter status one. But if you go into uh, the test Modbus panel and uh, you have everything hooked up and you attempt to read say from start register zero and just read 10 registers worth, you'll see that register one is the whole frequency and register two is actually the first inverter status. So all of the registers past that get off by one. And, and this seems to happen a bunch, even in the, um, the coils as well. If you just read uh, the sequential list of coils out, uh, you'll see that the IDs don't line up with what the documentation says here. So if you're looking for a specific thing, you kind of have to hunt and peck for it. It would be. It will end up being close to what the registers here uh, in the documentation say, um, but you're still going to have to, uh, you know, try and set a value in it from the um, the editor and read it back over Modbus because you can't just take these uh, numbers and read them because they're they're going to be off by a random um, a random offset. So you'll need to look those up, and I, I find it's easiest just to you know to kind of dump a, a range nearby and look for the the values that you're specifically interested in, um, and then use those. Writing to the Modbus configuration stuff works pretty straightforward, um, but reading seems to be a little more finicky. I found that on on sometimes sometimes when I would first set this up from a, a clean install. The, uh, the values in this configuration panel uh, don't always get initialized uh, to the defaults correctly, and so sometimes you'll have uh, things set up for zero. And the timeout affects only the reads because it's not waiting for responses on the writes. So if you have the timeout set too low, if the timeout is set to zero and you have uh, input direction configuration set up, 
when you go and look in the brain, all of those configurations are just, there's no error or warning or anything that it's time, the communication is timing out. They just get fed with zeros and they never update. So if you're doing input values that you know are supposed to have values and you can test them in the test panel, and this test panel does not use, it uses a different connection. So it does not use your timeout values here. You can be reading values from, the, uh, the coils and the registers and getting responses here and having it timing out and zeroing out in the, the main plugin and, and within the brains. If you're getting zeros, you're not getting updated, update that timeout. I found that around 20, 25 milliseconds, it would start to work. Um, and 30 seemed to be pretty solid. And, and, and that's with uh, no additional delay added in the VFD configuration. So I would say start at 30 milliseconds uh, and go up from there if, if needed. Another th kind of oddness that I found is if you, when you create a new input, a new Modbus input, this input output doesn't actually seem to make a difference. See, so we're using uh, configuration zero to, to read the formula, and we set this to an output and hit OK. This as an input actually works just fine. So no matter what you set this to as inputs, all of those Modbus things seem to, to come in. It doesn't force it to write for whatever reason. So um, that, it seems, can be pretty much ignored. Another thing that can cause some confusion is the these configurations don't necessarily because there's there don't seem to be any error conditions in them just because you can read a value from them doesn't mean that they're live data you can actually disable the modbus run so that these no longer update they they um, no longer communicate with the vfd and if you have a brain that writes say say writes to the frequency sets to your vft frequency and you have another node in the brain to read from configuration one the output holding you're going to actually get back the last value that you wrote that doesn't mean that it was a written out to the vfd because this whole thing could be disabled and it's not reading from the vfd to get that value back this is the kind of the value that the plugin has stored that it should have to write to it, but not necessarily round tripping and, and reading from the register in the VFD itself.